Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range with a couple of AR-15s chambered in 7.62x39. The 7.62x39 is probably not known as the most accurate cartridge out there or caliber, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that most of the ammunition comes out of Russia from military factories. It's steel-cased ammunition, not exactly loaded to match grade uh, tolerances, but it's still a very common caliber, a very popular caliber, and some folks just want it in an AR-15. We've demonstrated in previous videos that the ARs chambered a 7.62x39 are capable of better accuracy than the AKMs, and therefore some folks are just gonna to gravitate towards the AR. It has familiar controls, things like that, versus the AK. The AK is a completely different rifle and some folks just don't care for the manual of arms and operating those rifles. And some folks just don't like stamped sheet metal for whatever reason, they work really well. But we have two different flavors here and these are probably the two best examples of 7.62x39 AR-15s on the market in, in my estimation. The first is the CMMG Mutant and this is an old version. It's still available. I believe they call it the Resolute now but they also still refer to it as the MK47 or Mark 47. So I'll either call it the CMMG or the Mark 47. I've taken this hunting and it's done an amazing job for me in the past. And I've had it for quite a while and I've only ran the thing suppressed the entire time I've had it. This is my newest acquisition, the KS-47 from Palmetto State Armory. And it obviously is very similar to the Mark 47. The KS-47, just like the CMMG, is based heavily on the AR-15. On the top half, it's pretty much straight up AR-15. On the bottom half, you'll see that they look pretty much identical in how they are cut and function. They both use standard AK-47 magazines and things like that. So you have all the ergonomics of the AR-15. Both these rifles are direct gas impingement, and uh, this one has a forward assist, this one doesn't, but we'll get into the details of the two rifles now. These rifles are very similar in function and form. However, they're quite different in design. We'll get into that and also price. So the question then becomes, is this rifle really worth almost twice as much as this rifle based on the design differences that it has? Let's get into the video and take a closer look. We would like to thank our friends at Big Daddy Unlimited for helping to make this and other videos possible. If you'd like to help us out, swing by the BDU website and just for 99 cents, you can try out their service for one month. And they're basically like the Sam's Club of the online world. So check them out. If you would like to stay a member, go by militaryarms.org. There's a big link right at the top of the website and you can stay a member for 20% off every month going forward. So please check them out. This is a 75 round Romanian drum. This is one of the current imports from Century Arms. And we already know it works in the KS-47 because we've already shot it. And I have some video footage of that being shot, but it has no problem whatsoever running the 75 round drum. Now we have noticed on the Mark 47, when we put the magazine in, there's an awful lot of play. It's not holding the front of that magazine up very well. That's not the case in the KS-47. This thing has a lot of play in it. So it'll be curious to see if this thing can uh, run all 75 rounds. I think it picked up a round. So let's see what, she, what she's capable of. I've taken the suppressor off for this because I don't want to burn the suppressor off the gun <laughs> or burn the, the finish off the paint, anyway, off the uh, can anyway. Holy cow, that'll wear your trigger finger out. It works just fine the whole time I could see that magazine just wobbling down there, but it worked. I didn't think it was going to. It's even a little bit difficult to get out of there because the front can go up so far, but uh, other drums may fit a little bit better. But again, that's a current production Romanian drum. 
pretty cool. It does work. I know Eric in his uh, meltdown video of one of these guns, he was having some problems with the drums and it was probably a different type of drum, but uh, it was pretty interesting also. I think the gun went something like 1,250 rounds in his meltdown test before it had a failure and it was a direct gas tube, uh, direct gas impingement gas tube that had failed on the gun. The rest of the gun held up just fine. 1,250 rounds is pretty good for his testing. Let's take a look at the similarities and the differences between the Mark 47 and the KS 47. So let's take a look at the, K, uh, the Mark 47 first. Yes, this thing has a key mod rail system on it. It's a really chunky rail. It's kind of a heavy rail. I'd much rather replace this with an M-lock down the road at some point, but that is kind of a testament to its age. I've had this rifle for quite some time. It has a slightly lighter profile barrel in there. It tapers up for the gas block and then kind of tapers back down towards the end of the rail. And on the end of it, I have a Griffin Armament Explorer Suppressor. Is that an Explorer? Yep, it's an Explorer. So, has standard AR-15 port cover, standard AR-15 controls, standard AR-15 M4 buffer tube, but the receiver is slightly bigger, heavier, and maybe about an inch longer than the KS-47's receiver. Why is that the case? Well, let's take a look inside the Mark 47, and that will tell all. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the pin out. It comes apart just like a standard AR-15. Break it open, take the bolt and carrier out, and the T-handle. Let's set this aside. Here's the Mark 47's bolt and carrier. So if the carrier, you take a look back here, this is a standard diameter for an M4. So this will work with a standard M4 type buffer tube, but it gets bigger towards the front and this is more the size of an AR-10 bolt. You'll notice it has three ports for venting gas versus two. And then if you take a look at that bolt, that big old hoss of a bolt, definitely borrowed from uh, an AR-10. It's a very heavy, much larger bolt than you'll find in the KS-47. So that's the biggest difference between the two guns. If we take the KS-47 apart, again, we have an M-lock rail on here, much more narrow, have a slightly heavier profile barrel. The gas systems are the exact same length. The, the, uh, the gas port and the length of the gas tube on both these rifles is about the same length. But this has a slightly heavier barrel profile. And again, those M-lock rails. Again, we have the port cover, just as accommodates a AK-47 magazine. This one has a Ford Assist, where the Mark 47 does not. And we have standard AR-15 furniture back here in the rear, just like the Mark 47. So let's go ahead and break this apart really quick. You have to use the tip of a bullet because this one fits very tightly together. Hinge are open. Inside, standard AR-15 fire controls. Take the bolt and carrier out and the T-handle and then set this aside. So there you go, guys. Look at the size differences between those two. Now you're gonna notice that the carrier is slightly longer on the Mark 47. This is a standard sized bolt and carrier group of an AR-15 on the KS-47. Here you can see how much more mass is in the forward part of the bolt on the Mark 47. And now you can see the differences between the bolts themselves. This is a standard 223 bolt that's been hogged out to accept the larger uh, case head of the 7.62x39. This is a 308 bolt and it obviously has much more material to support that case. And that's one of the reasons why I run the Mark 47 suppressed and I haven't yet suppressed the KS-47. Jason's had a 458 SOCOM rifle before, and it does similar things, uses a, a bolt much like the KS-47, and when he would run his uh, Mark, or 458 SOCOMs suppressed, he cracked two bolts. Now, it's been said that standard AR-15 bolts that have been you know, hogged out to accept the 7.62x39 uh, are, are prone to failure, and we're going to find out. We're going to run the snot out of this KS-47 and see if we have any types of failures with it. And then after we get through several thousand rounds, say 5,000 rounds, then I'm going to throw a can on it and run several more thousand rounds through it and see if we can cause the failure of this bolt. Because the Mutant, there's absolutely no way that bolt's ever going to give out. This gun will last me the rest of my life. I'll be curious to see how the KS-47 holds up. So again, those are the biggest differences of the guns. Everything else is pretty much similar. 
At just under $900, the PSA KS-47 is the most affordable rifle between the two guns out here this afternoon. It has a very nice thin rail on it. You have 1913 sections up here that are machined into the rail up front. And then you'll notice the 1913 rails only continue this part, about this far out onto the rail up on top, but the rest of it's all M-lock going around. And it's a very lightweight, narrow rail, as I said. It has a standard A2 birdcage on it, but the thread should be concentric to bore. So if you take that crush washer off and put uh, a muzzle brake device on there, you should have no problem whatsoever suppressing this gun, just like I suppressed the uh, Mark 47. As I mentioned already, it has the same fire controls and everything as the AR-15. So the other thing I want to find out that I haven't done with this gun, but I've done with the Mutant, but we'll do the same thing with the Mutant, is use some different types of magazines to see how it works. One of the biggest drawbacks of the AK system is the magazine. There are so many countries making so many different variations of the AK magazine for 760 by 39 that many times you'll find that even some AKs won't run with certain types of magazines. So making an AR-15 that can run with a wide variety of magazines is quite the feat. So let's start off with this European magazine. This is a current production European magazine. You can pick them up online for less than 20 bucks. And let's see how it works. We only have 10 rounds loaded into each magazine. Now, one thing I have noticed about the KS-47, so that magazine's seated in there tightly. It's not gonna come out, but this lever isn't all the way back against the trigger guard. Sometimes I'll find myself pulling that lever back to make sure it's completely locked in. But even then, I've not had problems with the magazines falling out, even though it's not completely up against the trigger guard. So let's fire these 10 rounds. All right, so that's interesting. It's overriding the rounds in the magazine. So on this European mag, you know, pull the bolt to the rear. It has a very heavy bolt uh, I'm sorry, recoil spring in there. This is much heavier than a standard AR-15 feeling, uh, at least to me. So it's just riding right over that round in the magazine. Even if I pull this lever back against the trigger guard, it's overriding the rounds in the magazine. So this magazine's not gonna work. We'll see if it works in the Mutant. Here we have a good old fashioned Bakelite. See? But I can pull it back. See if it picked up around. Neither one of these guns will lock open the last round fired, unless you have a, a follower that accomplishes that for you. But they'll drop the bolt as soon as you pull the magazine out. There you see how you release the magazine. And the bake light seemed to work just fine. Here's an old slab side magazine. Stick that in there. Again, you can see it doesn't quite come back against trigger guard, but I'm gonna go ahead and see if I'll pick up around. I think it did. And we'll see how she works with the old slab side. All right, good function there. The paratrooper, I would do the air quotes if I could, uh, magazine, which isn't really a paratrooper magazine, it's just an old aluminum magazine that the Russians messed around with. Okay, it locks in there. So, with the exception of that European magazine, it doesn't seem uh, that it has any problems with AK mags. And you're gonna find various guns that use AK mags are gonna have certain mags they don't like to work with. But um, one thing we have noticed is, no matter what mag we use, this catch doesn't always come back all the way against the trigger guard, signaling complete and full engagement with that rear lug on the magazine. So many times, if not most of all times, it'll be slightly away from that trigger guard. Here's the P-mag. It's a little 10 round PMAG. I'll show you what I mean. I rock the PMAG in. See how far forward that is? This is really pronounced on the PMAGs. I can push up on it and that's about as far as it's gonna go. If I reach up there and pull it with my finger, it'll lock back. But even right there, it still should function just fine. 
and the mag shouldn't fall out. The other thing I've noticed with the KS-47 is that it's a bit more punchy than the Mutant or the Mark 47. This thing has a very abrupt recoil impulse, but um, it's not unmanageable or anything, but it's definitely going to be more pronounced than the 556, even 65 Grendel, things like that. This thing's got a pretty good uh, push to it, but I don't know if that's a, a function of how they've gassed it or what. Like I said, it has a very heavy feeling spring in there. I mean, that is much heavier than what I'm used to. Uh, having on things like my 5.56 or even my 6.5 Grindle guns. But we've never had any problems with it. Uh-oh, the slab side, malfunction. Same type as before. All right, finished them out, but not 100% reliability with that one. So, it seems that both rifles have the mags they like and don't like. And you do have to be a little bit careful when you're running a standard suppressor uh, like the Griffin Armament can that generates quite a bit of back pressure. If I were running an OSS on there, uh, it would be much lower uh, back pressure and these other magazines might work. But I typically use PMAG when I go out hunting and stuff. And that's what I've used this rifle for in the past on pig hunts and things like that. I'll typically just use PMAGs because they're affordable. If I break them or lose them, I really don't care because they don't have the collector's value of one of these Russian bake lights or slab side mags like this, which have become quite collectible. As I've pointed out, both these rifles are very similar in form and function. The only real difference being the fact that the CMMG is bigger, heavier, and has a larger receiver, bolt, and carrier, thereby making it more likely to be able to withstand the extra you know, pressures being generated by having a can on the end of the barrel and um, just shooting tons and tons and tons of 760 by 39 in theory. I've not broken a bolt head on my KS-47. I don't know that, that it's even a thing. I've never read any problems on the internet, but I haven't gone looking for those problems either. So we'll find out for ourselves. We'll just keep shooting the rifle. It shoots really nice. Uh, it seems to work just fine with a wide variety of ammunition. And generally speaking, I run P mags when I'm just out shooting these types of rifles. I'm not out trying to find, you know, classic AK mags to run these ARs. The P mag seems more fitting. So in the end, this one retails for $14.99. If you get it with any color of Cerakote, that's just with a hard coat black anodization like you see here. If you get it with any type of Cerakote, that's gonna add another 150 bucks to it. So now you're over $1,600 for the gun, but $1,500 as you see it here. This one is just under 900 bucks. So it's, it's in the high eights. And so this one is quite a bit more affordable. So it boils down to is having the beefier upper and the beefier bolt and carrier worth almost twice the money versus the KS-47. Only time will tell. I've been shooting this thing for several years. It's filthy on the inside. I've never cleaned it. Most of the time it's been shot suppressed and I've never had any issues with it. It's been a great rifle. Again, primarily using those PMAGs. This, same thing. I've had this for maybe a month or so. We've shot it quite a bit, tried every different type of ammunition in it. We've done accuracy tests with it and it's a very capable rifle. It's a very good rifle and it seems to be uh, one heck of a value as compared to the CMMG. All right, guys, uh, that's it for this video. If you would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel so we can continue to bring you uh, unbiased information as humanly possible like we have in this video, well, we can only do that with your support. There's a link down below to Patreon. Please consider following that link and supporting us over on Patreon and becoming part of our family. Also, right here on YouTube, you'll notice there's a little join button underneath the video player. Give that join button a click and consider supporting us right here on YouTube. And last but not least, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. All right, guys, thanks for 20, or 20 years. Well, I hope I make it to 20 years. Let's call it 12 years of support, and I'll talk to you soon.
<laughs> really smooth shooting with that two port muzzle brake on there. Later guys.